Well, the summer transfer window has been completed. We have upgraded our squad as best we can for our first season in the Champions League. Now, apologies for the last couple of days. I've decided I'm selling my house. So uh, <laughs> that's taken priority over recording the videos as of right now. But we're back. Our transfer window has been done. We're still very much in the transfer window. It's the 24th of July before our first game in Syria. So there is opportunities for us to be able to bring further incomings and outgoings. Let's quickly run through what we've done before I discuss how not very happy I am with it. <laughs> so there hasn't been any real major outs. We've only brought in 2 million quid. David Barashi was like our fourth choice centre-back who wanted to leave. He's went to join Montpellier for 1.3 million. Alberto Paleri, one of our backup goalkeepers, has joined Alaves for 875k. And the rest of them, I couldn't even tell you who they are. There is a couple of loans we'll talk about. Luca Marafiotti is one of our youngsters who came through I think it was our first ever uh, youth intake, I believe. Ignore the wages he's on, because I had to offer him quite a lot to keep him out of Inter Milan's hands. But uh, I think he looks fantastic, and he's gone on loan to Palermo. He's got the five-star potential. He's currently two-star. If he can have a good season out at Palermo, I think they're, they're in Serie C. They have really, really fell off. We'll see how he develops there anyway. Joe Resend, one of our Portuguese strikers we signed on a very cheap deal, is out on loan in Serie B at Lecce. Let's quickly address all these free transfers that are like 16, 17 year olds who were uh, contract was expiring, who've decided to sign because they looked quite good. Uh, Verpikas, he's a Lithuanian centre-back. I believe he's got five-star potential, two-star current. He'll sit now under 20s if we can't get a load move out and hopefully he'll be a first-team player in the future. Nicholas Free, he's two-star, four-star, so unlikely to make the first team, but a 16-year-old Danish goalkeeper. Plenty of potential. Hopefully make some money on this lad. Nikolai Konarup's probably one of the best ones that we got. Two-star current, five-star potential right back. It's a position we desperately need. 16-year-old Danish. Again, free transfer. We'll wait and see how he develops at the club. Frank Lawrenson from uh, Randers FC. Disappointing one. Not as good as I thought he was going to be. One and a half star, three and a half star. He'll probably be sold. Lars Overby, a left winger who looks actually really well-rounded at 17 years old. Two-star current, four and a half star potential. Jan Willis. From Copenhagen, 17-year-old, two-star current, four-and-a-half star centre-back. Looks okay. Jesper Larsson, uh, as you can see, most of them are Danish. This one, two-star, three-star. We can ignore him. And Nicky Andreasen, two-and-a-half star, four-star. I was really excited by him. He looks fantastic as a 16-year-old. Unfortunately, he doesn't really have the potential we are looking for. But we've brought all them in. They'll get loaned out or developed at the club. And we'll see if they make an appearance in the first team squad sometime in the future. The first name that we brought in was Moise King. <laughs> Everton decided to list him for loan again. Uh, I was struggling for striker options and it absolutely made sense to bring him back. He had a fantastic season last year. 18 goals and 6 assists in 38 games in Serie A. Injury free uh, playing every single game in the league. And I'm more than happy to bring him back in for another season. We pretty much ignore Premzil, Novak. We signed him on a punt, 46k, Czech defensive midfielder. Doesn't look like that one's going to turn out. Filippo Melagioni, he's been at the club for two years on loan. We've finally signed him permanently. The deal was already agreed long before I became manager of Genoa. So he's in the first team squad and he's actually ours now, as is Lennart Sisbora for 5 million. I would not have made the sign should I, if I had the option, but again, the deal was agreed two years ago. And that takes us to our three main signs, the first of which is Edvard Tagseth from Rosenborg, £5.25 million. A Norwegian 21-year-old central midfielder who can also play in the defensive midfield. Uh, we definitely needed some new recruits in the centre to play in that Metzala role alongside Alcaraz. And this boy fits the bill absolutely beautifully. And of course, he can play in defensive midfield as the deep-lying playmaker, which... Could end up being the option if Thomas Belmont doesn't perform as we expect this season. But he's, for the price, I thought he's an absolute steal. We've been chasing this boy pretty much since I came to the club. Liberato Casasia. Finally, STVV accepted a reasonable fee of £8 million from the New Zealand left-back who also has Italian nationality, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to sign him. Three-star current, five-star potential. Fantastically well-rounded left-back and he solves that problem position that we've had since we've joined the club. I did try and move on Ehen Munoz, our other left back we signed last year. He had a deal agreed with Tottenham, uh, Torino for like 5 million quid. He ended up rejecting the wage contract, which is fantastic. So now we've got three left backs. But I don't mind. Our squad's pretty, pe pretty paper thin at the minute. So I probably should be avoiding getting rid of anybody. But this boy, I think he's going to be good. And finally, a new striker recruit. We're filled with Esposito. We're filled with the Greek. Uh, Lazaro was my third choice. 
and we've brought him in for 11 million pound three star current five star potential 20 year old brazilian he can play as the attacking midfielder on the left hand side or as the striker which he will be playing for us uh advance forward complete forward or the false nine which is where i was thinking about actually playing them uh if tiago almada does drop into that midfield like we've talked about previously he can be the guy who fills in the shoes but as things stands he's probably going to be our fourth choice striker we do have a few more deals in the often just to bolster the numbers in the squad makudi from newcastle on loan a center half he would be our fourth fifth choice center half he would not get any games patrick berg from paris saint germain similarly he looks actually quite good, so he might actually end up getting some games, but a lone player to fill out the squad alongside Pietro Pellegri from AS, AS Monaco. If we can get him, that would be fantastic, just because our squad really is paper thin. We have 22 players, um, so we have one, two players for every position, and if we have injuries, we're absolutely knackered. But we do have £11 million still available in the transfer budget and 56 k still available in the wage budget should we find someone who I actually want to sign. There is players out there that I do want to sign, but they cost too much money. And I'm not going to make a habit of signing players who I don't want just because we can afford them. Um, we really do want to build for the longer term. Like this season, I want to still compete at a similar level that we did last season. But I'm not expecting us to be taking that massive jump, jumping over you. We're getting to the last stages of the Champions League. Not with the signings we've made anywhere. So if we look at the team report, it's pretty similar to how I'm going to play the side. Uh, Melagioni probably will drop out for Tagseth and Thomas Belmont coming in that defensive midfield role. Giglione, right back, is now our weakest position in the team by an absolute country mile. But again, I just can't sign anyone. There was no goalkeepers either. Sporty Yellow remains as our number one. David Carmel was attracting interest and still is, to be quite honest with you, but offering like eight and a half million pounds from him. And I wanted to sell him. There's a centre back I want and he's 16 million pounds up front to match his minimum fee release clause. And I can't. Because David Carmel won't sell for a decent fee. So he will be our first choice centre back along with Enel Amedzevic. Uh, obviously, our new left back will be our starter. Klozek, Moyes, Keane, and Thiago Almada will, of course, be our front three. They were absolutely devastating last season, uh, particularly Klozek. So we, we've had no interest, by the way, in Klozek. I was absolutely flabbergasted by that. He scored 37 goals in 37 games last season. And not one of the big clubs wanted him. So that brings us to the first game of the season. Atlanta at home. Good side, Atlanta. Um, I think they've caused us problems in pretty much every meeting we've had with them so far this uh, since we became Genoa manager. So we'll have to wait and see how this goes. We've actually, <laughs> we can't even fill out the whole squad in terms of substitutes. That's that's pretty devastating. Adam Hlozek is injured for today's game, so he is not going to start. Thomas Belmont is going to start, and Melodjoni is going to come out. But this will be the lineup then. Sport Yellow, Giglione, Enel, David Carmo, Cassassia. Ah, what's his first name? Liberato. That's his name now. Liberato. Thomas Belmont, Alcaraz, Tag Seth, Lazaro, Almada, Moise Keane. We should have enough. It depends how the boys integrate into the new squad. There hasn't been that many changes to the first team squad, so I'm not anticipating a huge amount of uh like gelling needed or team cohesion. So let's get into the game anyway. See how we get on Atlanta. Tough, tough first game, but I'm expecting a win. First highlight of the game, finally 28 minutes in, and it's ahead of that goes over the bar. Fantastic, fantastic performance, boys. Do you know nil, Atlanta nil? Absolutely loving it. The fans will be bouncing in the stadium. Our first highlight of the second half comes 60 minutes in. Our throwing is given away sloppily, and Atlanta can come forward with Alejandro Gomez. Tag Seth does win the ball back in Almada with an absolutely dreadful pass. Mariusic plays it inside. Enel gets the header clear. Tiago Almada, it's three on three. He's driving straight through the middle. He's in behind. Oh, he's dinked it. Oh, he's hit the bar. Almada, what a strike that would have been. The highlights coming thick and fast now. Lewis Muriel's played in behind by Mariusic. And it's Atlanta 1, Genoa 0. Fantastic. Low it. Got a couple of knocks out there. Lazaro is going to have to come off for Eldor. Um, tag sets on the yellow card will bring on Mela Joni for him. Freshen things up in the midfield as well. We've gone a little bit more attacking in terms of our player roles and instructions. But with 15 minutes to go, might be our first defeat of the season straight away. 80 minutes gone, we have ourselves another highlight. It's once again Atlanta on the attack down this left-hand side. Ilicic out of Douglas. Is he going to whip it in? He's not the player. I was hoping he would whip it in. Oh, it didn't be a penalty. Thomas Belmont gets rid. Uh, Batella wins it. Oh, that was such a breaking opportunity. We're closing them down well, but Atlanta are really doing well at keeping the ball. Giglione gets the challenge in. Enel clears. 
Again, the f uh, we're clearing it and the R way is first to the ball. Thomas Belmont, it's cleared again. Eldo brings it down nicely and feeds it to Thiago Almada. Back to Eldo. He's in the acres of space. Eldo, he's still got it, lads. Eldo, uh, that, that one, first goal of the season. His first goal in God knows how long. And uh, he levels things up with nine minutes to go. Only a couple of minutes left in this game. We have went very attacking. I've went for the win. Um, I'm not happy and content with the draw. It is Atlanta on the ball, or Ilicic claims the possession and feeds it down this right-hand side. Marusic played the ball in that killed us last time. Can we get the challenge in before? Oh, no, Liberato. Oh, mate. What the hell is that? You debut and you're giving away a penalty. That is not good. Sporty Yellow's arguing the case. Uh, that was a penalty, so a VAR is not necessary. Penalty has been awarded, and Atlanta have the opportunity now to steal the three points. Lewis Muriel steps up, and he... Oh, my God. <laughs> Let's, let's just skip this replay. I don't want to see it again. What a way to lose it. Genoa 1, Atlanta 2. To be fair, we didn't deserve the win. So I'll not lie, a little bit of a disappointing way to start the season. Um, looking forward to the next episode though. It's going to be our Champions League group. Our first game in Europe in charge of Genoa. We need to see who we're going to face as well, of course. And hopefully be able to pick up a little bit of form in the league after a disappointing start. But anyway, lads, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.